Uh, let's bring into this conversation friend of the program, Jonathan Davis, wealth manager from Hertfordshire. Jonathan, good afternoon. Hello, Rob. Jonathan, what, what you, what's your take on this? The idea of giving everybody under the age of 55 £10,000. Um, the, the idea, uh, whatever the numbers, the idea was used throughout the 20th century um, in uh, China, in Vietnam, in North Korea, in the Soviet Union, in much of South America. Um, ultimately, it's just another form of communism. It's just another form of state control. However, they wrap it up. And I don't doubt for one moment, in fact, I'm one of the biggest arguers that artificial intelligence and the technology that we're seeing coming through in the 21st century is going to put millions, possibly billions out of work, which, of course, is the first time that's going to happen in 250 years of the Industrial Revolution. But this is not the answer. This is, uh, this is the ultimate, Rob, you're, you're, you're listening to get this. This is the ultimate in state control, because the very simple reality is if they can give you money, if they can raise it, they can also reduce it or take it away if they're unhappy with you. There is, there is an idea of universal basic income that you, you, the government, a, a government gives every citizen that needs it £20,000, but you do away with all kind of benefits and, and tax reliefs and pensions. You just get a flat fee and somehow the, the economy benefits. The government saves money. Um, as I say, they, they tried it with communism. And the reality is that when you don't, when there's no incentive to go out and actually work and uh, produce and uh, develop your career and your professionalism, then you sit on your couch watching um, um, that Kyle bloke uh, and, and eating pizzas. In other words, uh, the economy goes down the pan. Um, no, this is not the answer. The answer is reduce the cost of living. I've just been listening to you um, talking to various guests about how much it costs to live. Uh, accommodation, how middle earners, 25 to 34s, will never be able to buy a house. I couldn't agree more. But no one, I notice, has, uh, uh, and indeed in the news, um, they, they had uh, Paul Johnson from the Institute of Fiscal Studies saying everything but the solution, and the solution is to reduce house prices, How? to reduce the cost okay. of living. Okay, uh, and, um, thank you for listening. Uh, there are some really emotive emails coming from parents and people who just can't get a house. The uh, one idea that was floated earlier was capping house prices. I said you can't do that. I mean, how how, w how would you cap the the housing market? You, 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 can, you can do whatever you want, and that's the thing. Governments always intervene, whether it's capping energy prices or putting taxes on, uh, uh, on whiskey or, or on, uh, on sugary uh, foods. They can do whatever they want, but it never works. What the solution is for government to get the heck out of the way, to stop intervening and let the market take over. OK, uh, but, but okay. If, you, if you let the market take over... As we have done, then no, we've we seen... No, we haven't. That's nonsense. Hang on, but in house prices, the market has taken over. They've That's got shot absolute up. absolute nonsense. Have you never heard of help to buy? Have you never heard of uh, interest rates lower for longer than the market actually wants them? It's no surprise that uh, as uh, central banks around the world have been saying we're going to reduce quantitative easing, it's no surprise that interest rates have been rising because the market wants higher rates. But uh, the Bank of England England and so on have been keeping interest rates lower for longer than they should have been. Help to buy is the government directly lending money to house buyers. That is state intervention. Without that, I can guarantee to you, not, I'll bet you everything you own and everything I own that take away help to buy and within three years house prices would be materially lower. Most people may not believe that. I know, I know, I look, I'm not doubting your expertise, Jonathan, but I can't see how that really would... Cause, in 2012, uh, Rob... Uh, hang, on, 2012, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because the, the housing experts say, build lots more houses, that's what brings the price down. Well, um, I, I've just written a paper on that as it happens, so, you know, I, I rather think I might be an expert on this as well. Um, it, it, while 
credit was flowing easily around the world. Um, you had massive house prices in, uh, uh, in America, uh, in Spain, in Ireland. Then we had the credit crunch of 2008 and house prices absolutely collapsed. Whereas in other countries where um, uh, there was easy credit and it largely continued or even got more in Canada, Australia, Britain, uh, uh, China, house prices have stayed high. Specifically with regards to uh, Britain, in 2012, uh, the annual house price inflation was, get this, zero. And yet we had the lowest borrowing interest rates in history. And house prices, I tell you, were about to fall off a cliff. Three months later, George Osborne introduced help to buy. House prices then soared. Jonathan, always a pleasure. We've got to move on for travel purposes. So you said ta- more. To- Can we just have tax-free cognac? That one you and I both like. Um, I, 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 tax-free anything would be good for me. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan.